Hey everyone, I'm Travis Spivey, joined with my son, Jordan Spivey, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our science tutorial videos. In today's video, we will cover the process of cellular respiration and its role in the cycling of matter and energy within the cell, so let's do this. Our learning circuit for today is, I can explain the process of cellular respiration and its role in the cycle of matter and energy within the cell. In today's video, we will start off by covering some of the common misconceptions of cellular respiration. Next, we will complete a brief overview of cellular respiration, then we will break down how ATP energy is made by the process of cellular respiration through glycolysis, the Krebs cycle, and electron transport, better known as the electron transport chain. And last, we will explain the role of cellular respiration and the cycling of matter and energy within the cell. Let's start off by talking about some common misconceptions of cellular respiration. Misconception number one. Many students believe that only animals carry out cellular respiration and only plants carry out photosynthesis. This is false. The truth is that plants also need cellular respiration to provide ATP energy for cellular processes. Misconception number two. Many students often believe that cellular respiration is just about breathing and getting oxygen into our body. This is also false. The truth is that cells need more than oxygen to survive. Think about it. Would you be able to continue living if the only thing you did was breathe every day? Our cells require glucose from the food we eat and oxygen to make ATP in our mitochondria. We need this ATP to carry out many processes in our cells and hundreds of other functions throughout our entire body. Cellular respiration is more than just breathing oxygen, it's about taking in oxygen and glucose molecules to produce ATP so our cells can have the energy they need to carry out cellular processes and remove waste that our cells don't need. Misconception number three. This is a huge one and I've been guilty of thinking this misconception myself. Most students believe that plants only need to take in carbon dioxide from the air and that will help them survive. But what a lot of us don't know is that plants also need oxygen as well to power their cellular respiration processes. Think about this, why do plants have mitochondria? The answer is simple, plants have mitochondria to convert some of their oxygen and glucose sugars into ATP so they can carry out their cellular processes. Let's complete a brief overview of cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is a process that occurs in all of the things that breaks down the chemical bonds of glucose sugars to release energy. This energy is stored in chemical energy bonds in the form of ATP. The bonds of ATP are broken to release the energy needed to carry out processes by our cells. So the formula for cellular respiration is glucose plus oxygen yields or produces carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Cellular respiration is like photosynthesis but in reverse. Instead of absorbing sunlight energy and storing it in glucose molecules, cellular respiration breaks down glucose molecule bonds to use to store energy for cellular processes. Now let's dive into the first stage of cellular respiration, glycolysis. Glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm of cells and does not require oxygen to start. In glycolysis, enzymes break apart one molecule of glucose to make two molecules of perufic acid. Glycolysis also makes four ATP molecules, but two of these molecules are used to start glycolysis. Let's recap the reactants and products of glycolysis. So the one reactant of glycolysis is glucose and the two products of glycolysis is two perufic acid molecules and two ATP molecules that fuel the Krebs cycle. Our second stage of cellular respiration is the Krebs cycle and it takes place in a cell's mitochondria. The Krebs cycle takes the two pyruvic acid molecules that were produced in glycolysis and converts them into carbon dioxide. An ATP molecule comes from each pyruvic acid when they are converted. The Krebs cycle is where the carbon dioxide we exhale from our bodies come from. The Krebs cycle also produces high energy electrons. Hydrogen atoms transfer these electrons to two carrier molecules, FAD and NAD, which now transform them into FADH2 and NADH. FADH2 and NADH are the energy carrying molecules that enter into the next stage of cellular respiration, electron transport. Let's recap the reactants and products of the Krebs cycle. The two reactants of the Krebs cycle are two pyruvic acid molecules and two ATP and the four products of the Krebs cycle are carbon dioxide, FADH2, NADH, and two ATP. Keep in mind that we now have a total of four ATP now going into the electron transport. Two ATP from glycolysis and two ATP from the Krebs cycle. 
Our third and final stage of cellular respiration is the electron transport. During the electron transport, the high energy electron carriers NADH and FADH2 release their electrons down the electron transport chain, which is a series of proteins located in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. An enzyme at the end of the electron transport chain merges these electrons with hydrogen and oxygen to make water. Another enzyme produces ATP from all of the energy released during the electron transport chain, which produces 32 molecules of ATP. Let's complete an overall review of the reactants and products of cellular respiration on the following chart. The one reactant of glycolysis is glucose. The two products of glycolysis are two pyruvic acid molecules and two ATP. The two reactants of the Krebs cycle are the two pyruvic acid molecules and two ATP that came from glycolysis. The four products of the Krebs cycle are carbon dioxide, NADH, FADH2, and two ATP. The three reactants of the electron transport are NADH, FADH2, and 4-ATP, which came from glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. The two products of the electron transport are water and 32 ATP. The entire process of cellular respiration produces 36 ATP in all. Two ATP from glycolysis, two ATP from the Krebs cycle, and 32 ATP from the electron transport, which adds up to 36 ATP in all. In summary, cellular respiration is a set of chemical reactions that cycle matter and energy from the food we eat, the water we drink, and oxygen from the air we breathe in, and to types of energy that the cell can use in the form of ATP. And that's our video for today. Now let's test your knowledge to see how proficient you are with explaining the process of cellular respiration and its role in the cycling of matter and energy within the cell. Use your electronic devices to scan the QR code at the bottom right of the screen, or you can click the link in the description box below the video. Remember, 80% are higher for proficiency, record your results on your proficiency sheet, and if you don't get it the first time, you better, better keep going because it's not over until you win. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and also click the bell icon so you don't miss it on any of our awesome videos. Peace, and, and have a positive, productive day. Tell me, brother, what were you the god of again?